there internets, I'm Michael and this is To Can Play That Game with a review of Let Them Eat Cake by Osprey Games. So what is it? Well let's take a look at the box here. We've got a cake at the bottom, so there is cake involved. And we've got a crowd of people watching this cake that's underneath a guillotine. So it's about cutting cake with a guillotine. Um, no, no, no. Hang on, that's not right. Huh. Well, it's all playing off of that famous quote of let them eat cake that apparently wasn't even a real thing, but hey, that doesn't really matter for the game. So it's all playing into that and the fact that it was the French nobles and the revolution, and in this game, that revolution has been successful. And you are the revolutionaries, you are the leaders of the country now, and you're leading by committee, which of course means that you have to vote on everything, you have to work together in order to get consensus on every single little decision you're going to make in running this country. So how do you win then? Well, the game is all about collecting cake. And that's where we go back to that play on words, that play on the whole thing about cake. Cake is basically just victory points in this. There's nothing else that fits in with the theme other than the fact that it's that whole quote. It is you're collecting victory points. And different cards are worth different victory points. The key thing about this game is with that voting, but not just the actual action of performing a vote. It's everything that goes along with that democratic process. You see, when you've got voting, you also get bribery, corruption, scandals, you know, working together, teaming up, you know, double crosses, all of that sort of thing. It's a very social game. It's about that social interaction. So, if you want to actually see how this all actually works in detail, how all the turns work, etc., I have done another video for that, so do go check that out. I'm not going to go into any more detail here, but I am now going to talk about my final thoughts on the game. So, what is it that I think about Let Them Eat Cake? Well, let's start with the artwork, because, frankly, it's straight there on the cover of the box. So, it's the first thing you're going to see, and so let's talk about it first. And, um, yeah, um, not to my taste. I mean, it's this cartoony artwork just doesn't really do it for me. You know, it's, it is repeated through the art in the entire game. You know, you've got these general cards here. They look that way. You've got your player cards and voting cards. And, you know, they all have the same look as on the box there. And it really just doesn't appeal to me. The cake, again, is a little boring these cake cards you know it's nice that they've got different ones and it's not even that the ones at the same point value are all the same or anything like that there is some variation in there which is nice the generals they they could just be the same general over and over and over and over again because they all work the same way but they've given some nice thought into doing different pictures for the different generals so that is very good but as i say the actual artwork itself not to my tastes so what about components then? There are quite a few components to talk about here. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the rule book. Now, my big issue with this rule book is it folds out to this side. It's hard to use, hard to reference. That's just my personal taste. The actual rule book itself though, very well written, very clear, easy to follow and will teach you the game nicely. As you can see, the game comes with many, many cards. These cards are perfectly average, normal, kind of quality, nothing special, nothing to talk about. The cardboard components are all okay, good, reasonable cardboard components. They'll last nicely. The pawns, they're this hard plastic. They look like they're from a really old game from like the 1980s. I'm not keen on those. I would have liked something a bit different. Maybe even just some meeples would have been nicer. Um, yeah, just not to my taste and kind of bring down the whole component quality in my feel. But let's talk about the best thing component wise. Well, is it the best thing? We'll get to that in a second. But you get this 3D guillotine. It serves very little purpose except for one thing. During the game, you will put someone at the guillotine, who may lose their head. And then the guillotine operator has the opportunity to go 
off with his head and push him into the basket. That, that's all that serves. You could, it's just a decision being made, but it's so fun to just poke your finger in and poke the uh, little guy off the edge. Surprisingly fun, in fact, but a nice little component addition. But what's wrong with this component-wise? If we take the box here, we open the box up, and then we take the clear plastic off. You know, we've got this insert, very nice, you know, I think fits in nicely. Except for this 3D guillotine. There is no way to put this in and keep it together. Which means that every time you play this game, you are taking apart and putting together the guillotine. And after a dozen or so plays that I've had so far, the cardboard on the bits that you slot into each other is starting to wear and damage. And that's a real big shame. It would have been nice for this to be fit into the box without having to be taken apart and put together because of the fact that that puts strain on the cardboard and causes damage that you could have avoided if it had been better thought out on the packaging. So that is components. Let's move on to the gameplay. Now I'm going to get it straight. You know, I'm, I'm not going to hold back here. I do not like this game. It is a social game. There is no getting away from it. There is no way to get around that. There is no way to win without being socially capable. And what that means is I am absolutely terrible at this game. Yes, you can practice social skills. You can potentially get better at them. But I've been doing that for over 30 years and I'm still useless at it. Some people are just not social people and therefore will not enjoy a social game. When it comes to this whole voting thing. It is a popularity contest. I've never been a popular person, I'm never going to expect to be a popular person, and therefore I'm never going to do well in a game like this. You could try and be devious and put, pit people against each other. Again, this is all social manipulation and interaction, and it's just stuff I'm not good at, and because I'm not good at it, I don't enjoy it. And so it's a game that if you enjoy social interaction, if you like trying to do the whole social manipulation, you know, making deals with people, bartering and all of that side of things, you will absolutely love this game. But that's just not me personally. So what else can I say about this other than the fact that if you like social aspects and you like that social interaction, what other things has it got going on? Well, I like the fact that you have the way you distribute the cake and with the generals, the way the generals work is really nice and the fact that you get generals every time you lose a pawn because that helps you stop becoming the enemy of the state and gives you a little extra power. You've got less aspects with the voting but then you've got other things to fear because you can use these generals against people to do, make the votes irrelevant. So it kind of works really interesting, really nicely that. If I could just get over the social aspect, those aspects of the game are really nice, really intricate, and the way they work and combine is really good. The fact that one person will allocate the cards, and they're thinking while they're allocating the cards, right, what's the person, who's going to be voted to be the food inspector, what are they going to do? Because I need to sweeten them up, I need to make sure they have a good card so that I can keep a good card. You know, there is this thinking, there's this bartering of you can think who someone is going to be. It can be very engaging and very interesting with a lot of laughs going on. But it does rely very heavily on that social interaction. And that's where I kind of, the game really just, I cannot get over that social interaction. It is so heavily integrated into the game. There is no way around it. And then that brings me to my final point, of course, because this is two can play that game and two cannot play that game. It's a social game and as with most social games, it doesn't work for two players. You know, I've tried variants of people controlling multiple people. No, never going to work, never can work. It's just that kind of game. So, in summary, if you like a social game, this is a good social game with some sound mechanics around it and some really interesting way the cards and interactions are forced by the mechanics of the game. If you don't like a social game, you're not going to like this game. 
Okay, I do hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. Of course, if you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel as well as subscribing to the channel and sharing it with your friends and family. And also take a look at us on social media. You can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.